First station Jesus is condemned to death Matthew chapter 15 verse 13 Crucify him they shouted Why what crime has he committed asked Pilate But they shouted all the louder Crucify him Wanting to satisfy the crowd Pilate released Barabbas to them he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Jesus stands before Pilate accused of crimes he hasn't committed and he who is without fault, sinless, stands silently and accepts the blame for the sin of all. Reflection Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye, and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? What a difficult command, and how ridiculous it is that the judgment also reciprocates. Whatsoever a man soweth, he shall reap also. Galatians 6 It calls for a self-examination. Do you ever catch yourself having to back down from an uncharitable comment? How often times you have prayed to God to be favorable to you and then how is it that you remain blinded by your own prejudice? In today's world, there are many pilots holding authority and power in order only to serve the strongest. They act cowardly before the scepter of power and mortgage their authority to the service of injustice. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The second station, Jesus carries his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. John 19 verse 16 the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. He went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Jesus stood before the soldiers who think they have complete power over him, while he is the one through whom all things were made, and without him was nothing that was made. John 1.3 And he said to all, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? Luke 9 Jesus full of pain and abuse, mockery, derision and violence to the flesh, experienced all this on the way of the cross. Reflection We see the unfathomable, the unspeakable depth of the love of Jesus for each one of us. 
there was none to defend you, O Lord my God, from the hatred of the world, when you stood silently, uttering no abuse and covered in shame. In every age, man has thought he could take the place of God and determine for himself what is good and what is evil. Genesis 3 He has thought himself omnipotent, capable of excluding God from his own life and from that of his peers in the name of reason, power and money. Today too, the world bows to realities that seek to expel God from human life, such as the blind secularism that suffocates the values of faith or morals in the name of an alleged offense of man or the violent fundamentalism that claims to be defending religious values. Dear Jesus, you who accepted humiliation and stood alongside the weak, we entrust to you all those who are humiliated and suffering in the day-to-day -day lives. We place into your hands all who are lost, all who are weak, unable to carry their cross. Fill them with the hope and give us courage to carry our cross. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Reading from Prophet Isaiah 53 He has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. He is stricken, smitten, and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was broken for our iniquities. Upon him was a chastisement that made us whole and with his stripes we are healed. From the foundations of the earth, even now, the earth was shaken, and dreadful fear took hold of those who were present when their Creator and God was crushed under the weight of the cross, and led himself to death for the love of all humanity, oppressed by bitter sufferings. He went on further to strengthen his apostles. He who holds the light of heaven in his divine hand, and before whom the powers of heaven tremble, see him falling to the ground without protecting himself under the heavy weight of the cross. Reflection Galatians 5.24 Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with the passion and desire. They do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of the life. It comes not from the Father, but from the world. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by thy holy name thou hast redeemed the world. Luke chapter 2 verse 34 Jesus blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against, and sword will pierce through your own soul also. The thoughts out of many of many hearts may be revealed. Love reflects love, mother and son. O Mary, the beginning and the end now stands here before you, the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, 
as in the beginning at Bethlehem. So here at the end, he is before you again, in need and in weakness, his face in your hands. A light to everlasting light, a night to everlasting death. He is the beginning and the end. The beginning that was an end is now the end that is a beginning. From paradox to paradox, he passes through the shadow and light in our lives, ceaselessly bringing us from shadow to light. Oh, what an intense moment of suffering. What did he seek, mother, from that storm filled with sorrow? And what word did you utter in return? To all eternity your word remained the same. The most loved the fiat, in the beginning to the voice of an angel, at the end to the will of the Father, and the angry rage of the mob, your humble surrender and fiat. Pardon us, O Lord, for the times we have yielded to our pride and ego and fail to bow to do your holy will. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene, helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Matthew chapter 27 And spitting upon him that took the rare instructor's head, and after they mocked him, they put on him the purple cloak, and led him away to crucify him. And going out, they found a man of Cyrene named Simon. They forced him to take up the cross. The world not only simply seek the death of the Son of God, but a brutal and a shameful death. Jesus Christ involves us to be partners in the suffering. He invites us to share in the Paschal mystery, to encounter every difficulty with serenity, to carry the cross of suffering daily and to follow Him. Reflection Matthew 7 in everything then, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the essence of the law and the prophets. The Holy Scriptures give us various inspiration. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. Love your enemies and do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High God. Forgive us, Lord, for all our faults and deceiving nature, failing to shoulder the responsibility to be partakers in the Paschal life and doing as you wish. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Matthew 27 Plating the crown of thorns, they put on his head, and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat upon him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. 
Veronica alone hastened to Christ in his passion. Everyone else fled. From the profane furor of the fevered crowd, unheeded by steeled hearts of stone, Veronica comes like an angel, pressing her veil to Jesus' bleeding face, and there she finds the holy image of Jesus etched within her trembling hands. The image of the face of God and Veronica in the midst of men, the incorruptible face of God in her heart, the unblemished mirror of mercy, Veronica portrays love and compassion amidst the steeled hearts of stone around. Dear Jesus, forgive us for the times we fail to seek your face in the faces that regard highly the disparity, discrimination, partiality, favoritism, pretentious and many such other. Psalm 27 of you my heart has spoken, seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face, dismiss not your servant in anger. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my help. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus falls again beneath the heavy weight of the cross. He falls under the power of so much of hatred and rejection, the hatred of men, the in hatred of darkness in deep places, beneath the unrelenting weight of our sins. Matthew chapter 6 The eye is a lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that? Our eyes are the entrance to our hearts and minds. They provide a doorway to our very souls. Eyes not only see but perceive well. It is how we perceive what we see that makes the difference between godliness and ungodliness, between light and darkness. If our eyes are good, our whole person will be illuminated. St. Paul in his second letter to the Corinthians speaks about the Satan's intentions to blind us from truth and corrupt our minds. He uses our eyes to gain entrance to our hearts. He parades before us all manner of evil, from the deluge of pornography on the internet to the endless barrage of the world's goods that appeal to our materialistic impulses. He deludes us into believing that these things will make us happy, fulfilled people, and lead us to darkness. Although the light is everywhere, like the sun at noonday, blazing, blinding light, if our eyes are continually focused on evil and sinfulness, the light we perceive is no light at all. Pardon us, O Lord, for all our faults for sins of prejudice and hatred, under the sins of omission of love, that we should have loved you. We have caused you to fall beneath the weight of the cross. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Eighth Station Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem who weep for him. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Luke 23 And there followed him a great multitude of the people, and of women who bewailed and lamented him. 
But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourself and for your children. On the path to Calvary, the Lord meets the women of Jerusalem. These women weep and lament at the Lord's suffering, as it were the suffering without hope. All they can see is the cross, a sign of curse, whereas the Lord chose it as a sign of redemption and salvation. In this passion and crucifixion of Jesus Christ, Jesus gives his life as a ransom for many. Thus he gave relief to those who were oppressed under the yoke and he consoled the afflicted. He wiped away the tears of the women of Jerusalem and opened their eyes to Paschal truth. Dear Jesus, my Lord, forgive us for the times that we fail to obtain the grace of repentance, to repent with a contrite heart and to weep for all our sins and offenses. Fill us with the grace to experience hope even in the midst of sufferings and challenges. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Ninth Station Jesus falls for the third time under the weight of the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We see the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, prostrate on the ground, exhausted, weighed down by our pain and sinfulness. It was the wish of God the Father that they may all be one. John chapter 17 God desires perfect unity among all his people, but the pride of man brings about distance among one another. Galatians 6 says, Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Jesus didn't give up in spite of his third fall until he has completed the action of redemption. Why don't we carry the cross that leads to heaven? Why then do we hesitate to embrace the cross that we may gain eternal life? Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Tenth Station Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Look how the executioners of Jesus even took off his garments. What indignity! God who clothes everything stands naked. His holy and pure body is exposed to mockery. How often have I stripped someone of their good name and shamed them? Stripping another of their dignity is the most cruel act. Jesus was stripped in order to clothe us with that innocence which we lost by our impure thoughts, words and deeds. It is because of our vanity and love of worldly things that Jesus had to suffer such a shame. Let us pray for the beautiful gift of purity to honor the modesty, dignity and beauty of each other even in the least of our brethren and in the worst of the situations. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. 
the eleventh station jesus is nailed to the cross we adore you o christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world john 19 then he handed him over to them to be crucified pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross it read jesus of nazareth the king of the jews behold the long awaited messiah hanging on the wood of the cross between two thieves the two hands which blessed humanity are pierced the two feet which trod on earth to proclaim the good news are now suspended between earth and heaven the eyes full of love whose gaze healed the sick and forgave our sins now hang upon the cross lord jesus you were crucified for our sins you pray to god the father and you intercede for humanity each hammer blow echoes like a beat of your immolated heart how beautiful upon the mount of calvary are the feet of the one who proclaims the good news of salvation your love jesus has filled the universe your pierced hands are our refuge in distress they embrace us whenever the abyss of sin threatens us and in your wounds we find healing and forgiveness have mercy on us o lord have mercy on us may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of god Rest in peace. Amen. Twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross, thou hast redeemed the world. Luke twenty-three. Then Jesus crying with a loud voice said Father into your hands I commend my spirit and after having said this he breathed his last From the height of the cross a cry is heard a cry a cry of abandonment at the moment of death a cry of trust amid suffering a cry accompanying the birth of a new life behold hanging on the tree of life you deliver your spirit into your father's hands causing life to spring up in abundance and forming the new creation today we to face the challenges of this world we sense the surge of fears which overwhelm us and shake our trust and question our faith Grant us, Lord, the strength to know deep within our heart that no death will conquer us until we rest in Your hands, which You have shaped and accompany us. May every one of us be able to cry out, "Jesus is my Lord; in Him I have no fear." In the darkness of our nights, we contemplate You. teach us to turn towards the most high have mercy on us o lord have mercy on us may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of god rest in peace amen the 13th station jesus is taken down from the cross and given to his mother we adore you o christ and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world john 19 verse 26 when jesus saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing near he said to his mother woman behold your son then he said to his disciples behold your mother dear lord those who love you remain at your side and keep faith in the hour of your agony and death when the world believes that evil triumphs and that the voice of truth love 
justice and peace is silent. Their faith does not fail. O Mary, most blessed, into your hands we place the entire earth. How sad it is to see this blessed land suffer in its children, who relentlessly tear one another to pieces and die. It seems that nothing can overcome evil, terrorism, murder and hatred. Before the cross on which your son stretched out his sinless hands for our salvation, O Virgin most pure, we fall prostrate this day and pray for peace. Grant us peace in our hearts. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 19, verse 39. Nicodemus also, who had at first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen clothes with the spices as in the burial custom of the Jews. Nicodemus receives the body of Christ Jesus. He looks after it and puts it in a tomb in the middle of a garden, which evokes the garden of creation. Jesus lets himself be buried, even as he let himself be crucified, in the same abandonment, entirely delivered into the hands of men and perfectly united to them, even to sleeping beneath the tombstone. To accept difficulties, painful events, deaths, demand steadfast hope, a living hope. The stone placed before the entrance of the tomb will be overturned and a new life will arise. Romans 6 verse 4 For we were buried with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the death, by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. We have received the freedom of the children of God, so that we will not return to slavery. Life has been given to us in abundance, so that we will no longer be satisfied with a life lacking beauty and meaning. Dear Lord, help us to search for meaning in life each passing day. Fill our hearts to overcome the fear of darkness and give us that lasting hope and faith in your victory to conquer sin and death. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy. Nanna shilu begala, nanna